Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, welcome to my podcast. Today, I thought I'd do a uh, quick talk about what happened at Wonderfest. Not so much of what happened at the event, but the events leading up to the event, namely the travel, which was a little bit of a nightmare. Stay tuned. Welcome to the World of Wayne podcast. You know what? Phil Siegel always tells me, if you've done something more than once, so you've done it twice in a row, it becomes tradition. And going to Wonderfest is no exception. I went last year. I've been this year. It's tradition now. No doubt I'm going to be going next year. But I've learned some things from last year's trip uh, that I'm not going to repeat this year. And I thought it'd be quite a funny podcast for you to tell you exactly what I'm talking about and exactly what's happened. Uh, so basically... A couple of weeks ago, actually, it was a couple of weeks ago now, wasn't it? Uh, we uh, were going to be leaving from Heathrow Airport. So uh, we stayed on the Wednesday night at Heathrow Hotel. So we didn't have to worry about any traffic, uh, being stuck and not being able to catch the flights. As a matter of fact, well, the whole the whole point of this thing was to take all the stress out of the flying and just make sure we're there and just take a leisurely pace. And to start off with... That's exactly what it was. We only had two light cases to take with us. So we got to the airport on the Thursday morning, roughly around about six o'clock. I'd already paid for the parking uh, and I could park in the short stay car park. So it's just a, a tiny short walk to Terminal 3. Uh, Mrs. Welder Wayne, very well travelled person she is. Uh, I'm like to just, you know, take the ambience of the airport in, perhaps go for a drink or a coffee or, uh, you know, just chill out. But no, she wanted to go straight through security. So we checked our bags. No problems there. And uh, we went through security. Now, this is where problem one came in. Uh, that day I was wearing a um, Wonderfest World of Wayne t-shirt that I made last year with tour dates on the back of everywhere we visited. Um, but I also had cargo pants on or car cargo trousers. And what I didn't realise is those cargo trousers were held together with studs. And when I went through the uh, metal barrier, obviously I flagged it up and they put me in this thing where you've got to hold your hands in the air and face, I don't know, some wall. It's like a circular chamber and something whizzes around you. And honestly, I lit up like a Christmas tree. The whole of my trousers were just bing, 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 bing. So as you can expect, um, I was going to get frisked. So uh, I, turned to the, I turned to the lady that was there and she's like, yeah, I'm not frisking you. It's going to be the guy. So uh, we couldn't figure out what was setting it off. And then obviously, as he started putting his wands over my pockets, I was checking my pockets. They were empty. It was the studs and every single stud on these cargo pants set the alarm off. So I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going to go to America and go through every security checkpoint having this same problem. So to alleviate that problem, when we were in the uh, the airside lounge, we decided that we were... Uh, go find a shop so i can buy something different um and the only thing i could really find was some super dry swimming trunks and i thought you know what they'll do it's quite a hot day today anyway i think it was coming up to 30s when we left the uk on that thursday so i uh went in changing room changed into the swimming trunks and then i packed my uh cargo trousers in my laptop bag which was my carry-on and there's no problems with that because that goes for an x-ray so uh, I was quite comfortable, actually. It was quite a good little decision to make. Uh, then we got to the lounge. Now, we went into a number one lounge, I think it was called. That's the, the actual brand name for it. Lovely time there. But you know what? In the last half hour, something unnerving happened. And I did make mention to this uh, to my friends at Wonderfest as well, that we were just sitting there, you know, just chilling out, having a drink. And this lady sat down next to Mrs. Welder Wayne, uncomfortably close. Now, she had her handbag there. And there's no seat really for this woman to sit in, but she sat in it. Now, I did that thing where you can look in another direction, but your peripheral vision is looking intently at what this woman's up to. And honestly, her hand was getting closer to Mrs. Welder Wayne's handbag. So I said to uh, Mrs. Welder Wayne, I think we should go to the gate because we only had about an hour left to go. Uh, and there was a bit of a walk to get to there, uh, which she did. So she packed up her stuff. The woman would checked her out to make sure you know, that her bag was close with her. And then uh, we we went to leave. As I turned around, the woman had got up and moved somewhere else in the lounge. Now, I don't know if she was a bag snatcher or a pickpocket, but I think she was. Uh, the more concerning thing is that this is airside. So she would have either had to go through security and had to go through all the security and rigmarole of getting into the lounge. 
but there was no reason for this woman to be sitting that close to Esther right next to her handbag. So uh thought I'd bring that up because uh, that's the start of this journey, but it gets better. OK, so we, we got to the gate, we got to our flight and it was an absolutely great flight. The only thing I'd say about American Airlines is who we flew is that their tray tables sit very low. So uh, it was basically on my belly <laughs> rather than high up. So uh, as you can probably expect, I spilt all my food down me. So uh, again, that was another change when we got to the next airport. Now, when we booked these tickets, uh, I wanted to fly into Chicago O'Hara Airport. Now, I know O'Hara because of, um, uh, well, I know Chicago because Windy City, Al Capone, Untouchables, that sort of thing. And I know O'Hara from planes, trains and automobiles because that's where Steve Martin was trying to get back to. Uh, but obviously it was snowed off. So I thought, oh, it'd be quite good to see the Sears Tower, or whatever it's called now, uh, flying over and see uh, Lake, is it Lake Michigan? Lake Superior and all the lakes as we go over. So uh, that was my decision. Uh, we landed and we landed an hour early. Now, we only had an hour and a half layover between the uh, landing in Chicago uh, to get to the Louisville flight, the internal flight, uh, which is going to take us to Louisville. Now, the good thing was the plane that we were on from London landed an hour early. So that meant we now had a two and a half hour layover. So I said to Mrs. Wilderwain, let's let everyone off the plane. We've got time to kill now. No problems at all. So we did that and we went to Passport Control, where all the TSA agents are. Now, if you've ever been to a theme park, let me pick something like Disney World or Alton Towers. And they have those lines that snake around each other. So it puts people in a great big pen, but there are snaking in that pen. We walked past one which was completely chock-a-block and I thought, oh my God, this is going to take forever. But luckily that wasn't for us. We were international travellers. That was actually for the Americans that just needed to uh, go through quite easily. But um, I was uh, had a faint smile on my face thinking, God, they're going to get held up. Uh, but I don't think our one's going to be so bad. There can't be that many international flights coming in. So I moved further down and to see where we had to go through for passport control. Uh, their little snake pit that they had going around was almost double the size and it was completely full. Not only was it full, it was going down the corridors for about 400 yards uh, and I thought to myself you know what we're going to miss our plane there's no way we are going to get through this queue absolutely no way but surprisingly the queue moved quite quick I think by the time we got near to the front about 50 minutes have passed and then we got caught in front of a family of seven people uh, and we were put in lines they had about 18 positions open but we were put in this line behind these seven people and they took half an hour to just process them. So an hour and a half through uh, passport control, we managed to get through. And I thought, right, we've got an hour to get to the flight. No problems at all. We can do this. But in Chicago, unlike Washington last year, you have to pick up your luggage. You have to collect your luggage and then you have to go through um, customs to check for dairy products and foods in your luggage. So we thought this is going to take a while as well. Now, when we went to passport control, they gave us an orange sticker, but we didn't know what that orange sticker was for. So we found our luggage, which again took about 15, 20 minutes for it to come off the carousel. And then we had to join another line where we were going to be going through the customs check. And you know what happened at that customs check? Another 20 minutes in this line waiting for that. They just took the orange sticker off us and that's it. Didn't check our bags or anything. So, uh, I haven't got a clue what that was all about, but what it does mean is we've now got our baggage that we now need to recheck to go to Louisville. So the rechecking process was quite quick. So, uh, you know, I was quite happy with that. The uh, If you were flying United Airlines, you were going to have issues because there was queues. But for American Airlines, there wasn't any queues at all. So we've checked our baggage and then we had just had to get around. to I think it was Terminal 3 or something like that. But yeah, it was Terminal 3 to get our internal flight. Now, if you know O'Hara Airport, the Terminal 5 where we landed in is absolutely nowhere near Terminal 3. As a matter of fact, it's got a monorail link linking them. Now, the good thing is there's only one stop between Terminal 5 and Terminal 3. The bad news is with the amount of people going through Chicago trying to get on that train was a living nightmare. It was like the London Underground in rush hour. 
So what we had to do then, Mrs. World Away News No Initiative, was like, let's go down the very far end where no one goes. Most people congregate in the centres, but in London Underground, if it's busy, go down either end of the carriages right to the end and you can normally get on them. Fine, we did manage to get on this tram, but it was a push. It was a big push. Um, no one else got on it. And believe me, if we would have missed that little tra uh, monorail, there's no way we we're going to catch our flight. So we got to Terminal 3. No problems. OK, just a bit of worry, you know, I'm not going to make it, but we, we got there. OK, the next thing that happened was we had to go through security again because now we're outside the airport. Now, Chicago O'Hara has got nine security points to go through with no uh, signpost or information telling you which one you need to go through. So you've got the quick... Uh, I don't know what's called quick pass or something. So you, you Americans know what I'm talking about, where you'll get pre-approved or something, so you can just whiz through security. Um, but our one was actually either security point seven or computer security point nine. But no one, no one communicated that. That was me having to ask every single person that looked in, looked important what security checkpoint that we're going to go to. So uh, we got to security checkpoint nine, and you're going to guess. I think you've already guessed what's happening. There's a queue. There's a queue just to go through this checkpoint to actually get to the security checkpoint. So we go queued up another 20 minutes here. Now we've got about 15 minutes to get to our flight. OK, and uh, we uh, th this person just checks our boarding pass and pass boarding pass and passport. And then they uh, let us go through to the hell which is security now once again i was quite happy knowing that i've got these new swimming trunks on i'm not going to set the alarms off so i whizzed through security mrs world of wayne on the other hand had different ideas they found something <laughs> she pinged the metal detector and i'm going to try and be tasteful here but it was in a grinnell area a crutch area now they asked her if she wants to go to a room to uh as see, see what's uh, setting this thing off. Now, bearing in mind, uh, this whole thing going through security was about 10 minutes. So we have five minutes now to get to the flight. I'm guessing the flight's closed before that. They closed the doors. So I said to Mrs. World of Wayne, look, I'm going to run down to the gate and explain what's happened and see if they let us on the flight, which is I did. I got to the gate, leaving Mrs. World of Wayne at the security checkpoint. And uh, I said to the guy, look, we've just been going through TSA. It's been an absolute nightmare. We've only just managed to get here from the flight. Now, they must know that because they've already checked our bags and those bags are on the plane. But the gate was shut. <laughs> they've shut the door and everything. So I said to the guy, look, the thing is that my luggage is on there. Is it easier for you to get the luggage off or to just let us on? And the guy was really nice. He actually opened the door again, which apparently never happens and let us on but mrs world of wayne weren't with me so i said to him you gotta hang on because my wife is just going through security i didn't know how long they're gonna keep her and at that moment mrs world of wayne ran <laughs> around, around to this gate and we managed to get on the flight now i was shaking with stress because if we miss this flight i don't know what happens when you miss a flight um we got on the plane dripping of sweat and laughing believe it or not we're laughing because this never happens this never happens and it would just make a great story to let you know how we almost missed our flight to Wonderfest. Now there's me taking every precaution known to man to make this completely stress-free and uh, yeah, it was far from that. But we got to the Louisville flight and you know what? The plane took off. It landed 10 minutes early in Louisville. We picked up our luggage, no problems at all. We got the hotel transfer and we ended up at Wonderfest. And then that night, uh, myself, uh, Phil Siegel, Spruverse and Lou Dal Meso, we went out to a, uh, I, I, I'm going to say Kentucky Fried Chicken, but it's not KFC. It was basically a fried chicken place that happens to be in Kentucky. So it's nothing to do with KFC. Lovely dinner there. Um, and that was really my time to unwind. And But the good thing is, because of all the stress, I think that beat the jet lag. So there was absolutely no jet lag at all for me. I managed to uh, get over that, no problems at all. So, uh, Wonderfest. We queued up, well, on the, on the Friday, we, uh, myself... And uh, Phil Siegel, we, we did an airbrush course with Awata and Tag Team Hobbies. And we were building the uh, Meralda from Bad Batch. There was a group of about 18 people in there. And we we're all making our own designs on this with the help of uh, Lou Del Meso, who provided the masks for us to use. And that was a really, really great day. You know, I learned a lot of things from that. A lot of techniques. Um, Todd McWilliams, Marvel Phoenix, he sat in and because um, I met him that night on the Thursday. And uh, we had a good chat. And then uh, that ended around about, I don't know, four o'clock. 
And then we had to queue up for our tickets. Now, Mrs. World of Wayne was already on the case for that. So she queued up for us so we could sort of jump the queue. Not really. Mrs. World of Wayne would have just bought free tickets for us. Uh, so she got all our tickets. There was no problems with that. We got the early bird entry. I think at the time of writing this, I think it was $65 each for the early bird and two day weekend ticket. Uh, that night, we uh, went. We, we already had a pre-arranged dinner uh, in Louisville, uh, which again we did last year. So it's become a tradition at the old Spaghetti Factory. Great place for um, Italian food. Um, I had some. <laughs> I had some chicken, and I can never pronounce the words. So they're all taking the Mickey out of me. Chicken fettuccine. Fettuccine. I guess that's the word. Fettuccine. Oh, that's right. Um, but we were joined by um, Lou Dal Meso, uh, Oggy Gonzalez from Interstellar Modeler, Ken Spriggs, uh, obviously Phil, Esther, myself, uh, and Paul from Paragraphics. And uh, we had an absolutely great night there. Uh, came back to bed, ready for Wonderfest the next day. And as you saw, the next day on the Saturday, most of the time when it opened, I was in the dealer room for a little bit of time. Not too much time, to be honest with you, on the first day. It's why I haven't really got much footage from the dealer room area. Um, but I was in the competition room and I was filming uh, from 12 o'clock when it opened to around about 2 o'clock. Then I went back to the room and I took about three hours to edit that video. So my whole day on Saturday was pretty much editing video. And then Saturday night, uh, we went up to um, see Steve Willens, the Maker's Cave, and his lovely wife, Katrina, uh, Ian Schwartz from uh, Pitstay Models, and also Todd was up there, um, uh, Liam from Agora Models, and Mark, who runs the uh, forums over at Agora Models. Uh, we had a great time, and it was a nice evening. I think we were there for a good four hours, uh, and they had laid on a nice uh, little um, uh, entrees on the table, a little bites to eat appetizers that sort of thing um it was a really good night and then um after that night i think lou had uh, had gone to go see uh his friend colt tv man if you don't know who colt tv man is you're gonna find out soon because we are doing a build relating to something we got from them um but i wanted to join him i wanted to meet steve from colt tv man so uh, i actually uh text lou where the room number was uh, lou hadn't got back to me he hadn't seen the message so uh we went back to the room and I thought, okay, I'm going to call it a night. Then I went to bed roughly around about 1030. And then I checked my messages and Lou had told me where, where Gold TV's man suite was. <laughs> now, this is where it gets funny as well. So I said to uh, Mrs. World away, Nestor, I said, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go and just uh, chill out with them for an hour. Just say hi and just get to know everyone. So I went out thinking that the room number he gave me was where this party was. So I saw a party. I started chatting with people. They even gave me a beer. And I'm looking around and thinking, well, where's Lou? I thought he'd be here. Um, yeah, this was the complete wrong party. <laughs> I was in the, the wrong get together. But you know what? Everyone was so nice and so welcoming. I couldn't tell you any of their names. It was in the, like this courtyard area outside the swimming pool. But everyone was so nice and I had a nice beer. And then I thought, actually, um, I should be on the fourth floor, not the second floor. So anyway, I found the room. <laughs> so uh, I met all the folks. Um, I met Steve from Cold TV, man. I met so many people that I uh, I can't remember their names, to be honest with you. So if you are listening to this, I apologize for that. Um, but I had a great night and they, they did like hearing about the old uk tv shows especially the comedy shows like red dwarf and uh faulty towers and stuff like that um so much so that i was there to about half one in the morning lou had already gone he had gone to sleep uh but i was chatting for england uh and then i rolled in at half one obviously mrs world away was like where you been <laughs> so uh these things happen but that was a great day and then on the sunday more chill date day it was um uh in the evening i met randy cooper uh and um and and a whole troop of people there we went to mama's which is like a barbecue ribs place uh or, and, and they have fried pickles there oh it's a lovely lovely night but i'm telling you, the whole the whole event was brilliant and it, it is a come down on the sunday knowing that you've got to go home the next day because when you go to these conventions you do get the con blues afterwards you you know you're you're around people you're around your peers people that have got like-minded hobbies people to talk to it's a great friendly environment and model building can be a very independent hobby so it's good to have that release and um the con blues are actually combated by the good thing of having uh a, a, a recharge of the batteries for your incentives because it does give you ideas and creativity. It, it, it's a, uh, what do they call it? It's a shower for your, your creativity. 
So um, when I came back, I was buzzing to go. As a matter of fact, I finished my America Wolf in London that I bought from last year's Wonderfest. So uh, <laughs> that was fun. But the um, so um, on the Monday, we flew back, which we didn't really have any problems. We did land in Philadelphia because we were going from Louisville to Philadelphia. Philadelphia had storms, very bad storms, as a matter of fact. And I was getting worried that our flight would be delayed, but it wasn't a problem at all. The flight left on time. We managed to get back to England. And uh, this is where we are now. So um, it's been a week now or just over a week since Wonderfest. No jet lag. Uh, I'm missing the place. It's, I've still got a little bit of the con blues. Uh, next year, it's only going to be me going. Um, Mrs. World of Wayne um, won't be able to go next year because it's during school time. Uh, they actually um, uh, changed the dates this year. It was a week later than it normally is, but next year it's reverting back to, I believe, the 1st and 2nd of June. As a matter of fact, the uh, Crown Plaza Hotel is actually going for a refit at the moment, and uh, the, the top two floors, 7 and 8, weren't available to uh, be rented out because they were renovating them. I believe the whole hotel's being done, so I don't know if that's going to impact Wonderfest next year because it's going to take a long time to actually do that the hotel is kind of stuck in the 70s it does look like a scene from Stephen King's The Shining <laughs> you do expect to go around the corner you have two twins looking at you saying come and play but uh it, it was a great time uh I did bring back um a, quite a lot of actual uh tools and stuff to use and paints I managed to get paints for it back no lack of paints just normal paints and I did get a model which uh is announced on Thursday's live stream as part of the Sprueverse challenge but uh I just wanted to tell you about our adventures uh to Wonderfest. As a matter of fact, the only thing that went wrong on the way home was when we landed, we found out that the M1 was closed. I need to go on the M1 to get home. So we had to go around to the A1, which means a two hour journey. So I hadn't slept on the plane. So uh, we were pretty much up for 26 hours that day. I came home, had about two hours sleep and I was fine after that. But there you go. That was my journey to Wonderfest. I hope you enjoyed this little podcast. Uh, but next year, if I've learned anything, do not fly into O'Hara Airport. Take care, everyone.